Over the weekend, a piece was posted at AmericanGreatness.com written by the scholar Victor Davis Hanson. I want to read a couple of paragraphs from his essay to kind of set up what we're going to be talking about. So we go to the article, and it's entitled, Can We Do Anything About America's Decline? Our largest cities are becoming uninhabitable, dilapidated, dangerous, and dysfunctional. The challenge is not just rampant crime, but the realization that if you, the citizen, are stabbed, shot, or beaten upon the street, the perpetrators may well be exempt from most punishments, and the victim either will be forgotten in his misery or, indeed, blamed for bringing such violence upon himself. Urban chain stores are closing down on the principle that if police cannot or will not stop consumer violence and theft, then consumers should not have any store to buy anything anyway. If there is no store, how can it be looted or shoplifted? I point out these two paragraphs to start a discussion tonight about other events that took place over the weekend. In two major cities in America, there was violence, looting, destruction, theft, and general mayhem. And it breaks my heart. For my part, without doxing myself, I live in a city of about less than 50,000 people in population. I long to travel to places like New York City and Chicago, Baltimore, Los Angeles, and other major metropolises in this country. I want to take part in the culture, visit the architecture, see the sights, do things that I normally don't ac access here where I live. But I can't do that, or more to the point, I won't, on the grounds I don't want to per put myself at risk. Which breaks my heart even more for the folks who live there. They're just trying to live their lives in the best way they know how, to be a part of the city that they grew up in. Sadly, more and more, that's becoming difficult, and they're leaving. And these once great metropolises are turning into dystopian nightmares. We're going to take a look at what happened over the weekend, and have a discussion about What's going on and can anything be done? So hang on. We're going to get into all that in just a second. My name is Brian Trippett. I am your front porch conservative. Step on up to my electronic front porch and let's talk. Over the weekend, violent crime broke out in two of America's major cities, Los Angeles and Chicago. Now, if that last one sounds familiar, you're probably sitting there saying to yourself, Front Porch, you tend to talk about Chicago an awful lot. What is your fixation with that city? Well, I don't have a fixation with Chicago per se, but it seems like Chicago is in the news a lot these days, and not for the best of reasons. We'll start there in the Windy City. Take a look at this headline from The Blaze. Hundreds of teens flood Chicago, smash cars, and drivers attack two teenagers shot. The article is written by a man named Paul Saka, and we read into the article... Hundreds of teenagers flooded into the streets of Chicago on Saturday night. In response to the chaos, hundreds of police officers were dispatched to the downtown area after there were several cars were damaged by the teenagers. Around 8 p.m., the mob of teens attempted to storm into Millennium Park. However, people under 21 are not allowed access to the park without being accompanied by an adult. The horde of teens forced police to escort tourists and locals back to their cars at the Millennium Park garage. Teens also reportedly attempted to force their way inside the Art Institute of Chicago in an attempted teen takeover. Officers from the Chicago Police Department, Chicago Fire Department, EMS, and SWAT teams were dispatched to the area. Rowdy teens smashed the windows of several cars by jumping up on the vehicles, including a police cruiser. Videos show a vehicle being set on fire. A man sitting in the driver's seat of the car was injured and taken to the Northwestern Memorial Hospital after the group of teens beat him as they smashed his vehicle. Now, I want to show you a few seconds of video from two different 
uh, Twitter accounts. Um, I'm just going to let this kind of speak for itself. So hang on and we'll play it here in just one moment. And folks, it gets worse from there. There's one other video I'll show you. It runs about a minute, but I'm not going to play all of it. But take a look at this. Life in modern America. Now, officials were outraged, as you might expect, and as well they should be. This is not the kind of thing that they want to see in their cities now or at any time in the future. But it's the response by the current elected officials in Chicago and those that are incoming that are the most shocking, aside from the behavior itself. Take a look at this. This is a headline from the Washington Examiner. New Chicago mayor defends teenage riots, says it's not constructive to demonize them. Story by Brady Knox. Chicago mayor-elect Brandon Johnson defended a large group of teenage rioters that ransacked much of the city on Saturday, saying, quote, it wasn't constructive to demonize them. Several hundred teenagers wreaked havoc in Chicago in a social media organized teen takeover event. The rowdy group broke windows, jumped on, battered and torched cars, got into fights, beat bystanders, and even got into gunfights before a large police response restored order. In response to the incident, Johnson issued a statement lightly condemning the riot before asking people not to, quote, demonize the group. In no way do I condone the destructive activity we saw in the Loop and Lakefront this weekend. It is unacceptable and has no place in our city. However, it is not constructive to demonize youth who have otherwise been starved of opportunities in their own communities. Our city must work together to create spaces for youth to gather safely and responsibly under adult supervision to ensure that every part of our city remains welcome for both residents and visitors. This is one aspect of my comprehensive approach to improve public safety and make Chicago livable for everyone. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I've got some things to say with regard to Mayor-elect Johnson's comments about this. I can agree in principle that we ought not demonize youth. I mean, in the end, should they choose to stay in the cities in which they live, they'll go on to be citizens of those cities, hopefully business owners, productive members of society, and they will contribute something back to the municipality in which they reside. However, there is a profound difference between not demonizing a youth, and locking them up when they commit a crime. These aren't youth. They're damned hooligans. They're destroying property. They're wrecking the city. They're causing police and manpower to have to be diverted to take care of this juvenile delinquency, whereas the police could otherwise be dealing with real crime in the city. And instead of coming out and saying, no, this is unacceptable behavior, no, this is not the standard we're going to set in Chicago, no, we are not going to tolerate this, the mayor would rather coddle and condone this sort of thing. Oh, but front porch, he said he doesn't condone it. Oh, baloney! That everybody else, you have a crime problem in your city, and it's about high time you, the police department, and those Soros elect or Soros influenced DAs out there in Cook County start doing something about it. But lest you think that this is confined just to Chicago, hang on a second. I'll show you another place in America where this happened. Take a look at this headline from Breitbart. Mob of looters hits California gas station for food, alcohol, and condoms. Looters targeted a gas station in Compton, California overnight Sunday and left the store severely damaged. 
Thousands of dollars worth of items were reportedly stolen during the incident that happened at the Arco gas station near Alondra Boulevard and Central Avenue, according to ABC7. Video footage showed two individuals apparently trying to break through the glass door by hitting it repeatedly as a crowd gathered around them. At one point, someone began kicking the glass. Once the door was opened, the mob poured inside the building while some on the scene held up phones to record what was happening. When asked what frightened her about the incident, one resident told ABC7, quote, The mob of people, period. You don't know how they're going to react once they get in. And if there's somebody in there, I know that they're terrified. The group is accused of grabbing food, alcohol, and condoms off the store shelves. Meanwhile, additional video footage of KTLA shows a street takeover early Sunday with a crowd standing nearby. And this is happening more and more all the time especially on weekends and through the week. I could read further into this article and would talk about more and more what's happening. And what have they got for a prosecutor out in Los Angeles? Oh, good old George Gascon, who I don't think ever saw a criminal he didn't want to let off the hook. Ladies and gentlemen, it's heartbreaking to say it, and it's even more heartbreaking to watch in the digital age of the Internet. But our major cities in this country are under assault, and they're deteriorating rapidly. The rule of law is quickly being abandoned and or forgotten or worse yet even ignored by officials who are supposed to be standing up to protect the citizens and the property of the cities that they all reside in. So what are we to do about all this? Or maybe what are some things we ought to start recognizing? Let me show you an article I found and I think this kind of sums up where we really ought to begin how to start remedying the situation in these major cities. This is this was published about a week ago at R. Emmett Terrell's The American Spectator, which, by the way, if you don't read The American Spectator, I highly recommend it to you. Trust Uncle Front Porch on this one. That is a great, great magazine, be it their print or online edition. And the headline of the article, which is written by Robert Stacy McCain, why do Democrats think they can win the crime issue? Media bias misinforms the public about gun violence. Now, the article has mostly to do with just that issue. Uh, gun violence and arguments on Republican and Democrat sides about what it all means, what should we do about guns. But there's one paragraph out of this article I really want to focus on. That's the first one. Crime is a people problem. If you understand nothing else about crime, you must understand this. Crime is committed by people. It is not committed by inanimate objects. While data on criminal activity can be charted as a trend over time, trends do not commit crimes. People do. There is a word for people who commit crimes. We call these people criminals. And if anyone is interested in investigating trends, one trend is fairly consistent. Most violent criminals are repeat offenders and will not stop this behavioral pattern unless they are locked up in prison. Now, the rest of the article, as I said, goes on to have a discussion about statistics and data related to guns, gun violence, municipalities, etc. But that first paragraph, I really think, is where we start to get to a solution about what to do about crime in major cities in America. Number one, we need to recognize that crime is committed by people. There's a lot of talk about guns and gun violence, and I'm not saying that those are discussions that we shouldn't have. But when are we going to start recognizing that guns don't commit crime? People do. In the end, you or I or anyone else has the capability and the willingness to break the law. Number two, if you do break the law, there should be very severe consequences. Either you should be made to pay restitution for that which you have stolen or destroyed, or some suitable punishment should be administered by the government, be it city, county, or state. Number three, as much as legally possible, Citizens should do everything they can to start protecting themselves and their property. Most of these major cities where crime is taking place have some of the most restrictive gun ownership laws in America. Chicago in particular. 
Now, if you're asking old Uncle Front Porch what I think we ought to do here, well, I think these major cities ought to begin the process of loosening up gun ownership laws and let the citizens be able to legally and lawfully arm themselves to protect their persons and their property. The police are very important. I'm not saying they're not, and I do not denigrate their service at all, but they can only cover so much territory with only so much manpower. If you really want to make criminals think twice about actually committing crime, if they're not totally sure whether the person on the other end of it is armed or not, that might make them pause before they start doing something foolish, stupid, and destructive. Number four, we need to start putting money back into police departments again. This whole nonsense about defunding the police because we have some utopian notion about human behavior and how it's good above all else and not historically wicked is silly. You need a functioning and well-funded police department, which also gets to something else. You need prosecutors being willing to take people to court and ask that judges hand down sentences as opposed to the police being blamed for what's going on when they make an arrest. All the police are trying to do is just simply enforce the law. And also, there's one other thing, and I go back to another video I did earlier about this. If there's crime in these cities, with all due respect, it's also, in part, the fault of the citizens. Now, don't get me wrong. The criminals are the ones that commit the acts. But may I respectfully say, in places especially like Chicago, you're the ones that are electing people like Brandon Johnson. You got rid of Lori Lightfoot. That was a good step in the right direction. Then you went even further backwards when you put an even bigger communist in the mayor's office. When prosecutors like George Gascon and others of his ilk around the country, Alvin Bragg, I could sit here and name them all day long, get elected to office, folks, if you don't like the crime in your cities, that's one thing. On the other hand, it's another thing to elect district attorneys and prosecuting attorneys that aren't going to do anything about it. My point is this. We need an engaged citizenry to look at the issues and look at who's on the ballot and start asking yourself the question, is this person, if I put them in, are they going to allow crime to injure my life and my property, or are they going to do everything they can within the bounds of the law to protect me? That's something we all need to be thinking about, particularly people living in places like New York City, Chicago, Minneapolis, Los Angeles, and all around the country, major cities that could be great once again if the citizens are willing to stand up and fight for what's theirs in a legal, lawful manner. But that's what I think about it. What do you think? As we start to wrap up this video, please do me some favors. Number one, if you're not a subscriber to the channel, please do so. Number two, hit the bell for notifications. Number three, share this video around to friends of yours that you think would enjoy it. And finally, hit the thumbs up. My name is Brian Trippett. I'm your Front Porch Conservative, and I'll see you next time.